the heart and soul behind every business. Stories. Welcome to Business Story of the Week, hosted by me, Joshua Lori. From setbacks to comebacks, from tragedies to triumphs, we inspire entrepreneurs through conversations that matter. Witness the magic that turns dreams into reality. Whether it's your career, business, or life, your success is always one story away. This is Business Story of the Week. And welcome back, folks. Welcome back to Business Story of the Week. I am your host, Joshua. And today's question is a health-related question. And you all know we love health topics on this show. And my question is, what kind of habits do we have? And are they truly allowing us to unlock true happiness and success and unlock our true potential? Our guest today is, of course, the perfect guest to answer that question. Anthony is the founder and CEO of Me and My Wellness, which provides holistic health solutions using food, medicine, combined with a holistic balance lifestyle approach. Anthony holds three bachelor's degrees in complementary medicine, nutrition and dietic medicine, chemical engineering, and chemical engineering. Ladies and gentlemen, I wanted to emphasize that. Furthermore, Anthony is trained facilitator in the Martini method, which we are going to be really digging into and talking about with today, and sharing all his insights and perspective with us. Anthony, Thank you for being on the show. How are you doing? I'm fantastic, Joshua. Thank you so much for having me on the show. I look forward to this insightful discussion around habits. Absolutely. Habits and health and everything in between and all the, especially what you talk about and what you really, that you really, the, the, the insight and the perspective, the, the wisdom that you impart on all your audience and listeners as well. Anthony, you have quite the background you have multiple degrees and you have a passion for holistic health um but before we really start getting into that i want to know can you share with us a story you know like anything that happened in your life any pivotal moments you know in your childhood throughout your you know uh your life that that brought you into this journey into a mental health advocacy did you always know you were going to get into health basically. But more than that, I understand that you have a story that inspired your journey when you were 18. Talk to us a little bit about all of that. And what is the story of Anthony Harcher? Thank you for the opportunity to share that, Joshua. So I was a really sick kid. I, I came like I started kindergarten mm -hmm. in, around that age, primary mm -hmm. school as mm -hmm. a, a sick child. I had mm -hmm. constant mm -hmm. ear, nose, throat infections. I had that gluey ear. I had those earaches. Those earaches kept me up all night oh, wow. and felt really sleep deprived the next day. Didn't have quite the same energy as the other kids. And I just wanted to be like all the other kids and running around with freedom. Mm -hmm. And so that really woke me up because I guess during that period, I was seeing doctors, you know, spending a lot of time seeing doctors mm -hmm. and the perception I had from a kid, there was something wrong with me, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not normal. <laughs> so, and then seeing special to, you know, specialty. Um, so I was seeing people, uh, ear doctors and things like that. And, mm -hmm. and then ended up in hospital having a couple of operations mm -hmm. and that really affected my learning career, uh, well, learning career, but my learning development in terms of, I wasn't hearing properly. I had to repeat a year of school and, and I just thought, you know, there's something wrong with me. I'm not well. And, and, but what that did was drive a really strong motivation from within to get healthy. And so from a very early age, I was reading nutrition magazines, nutrition wow. books, wow. exercise books, mm -hmm. and that continued throughout my teenage years. And so I had this massive a thirst for knowledge around health because I never wanted to be that sick kid again. I wanted to be well, and I, I'm still that person today. So wow. that that really sparked that interest around diet and exercise. However, as you mentioned, when I hit 18, I had a close mate who was a great 
football player. So rugby league, not soccer player, but rugby league player, really <laughs> someone I looked up to and mm-hmm. aspired to be. And I and I perceived him as having everything. Like he was mm-hmm. just successful in in all areas of life. Mm-hmm. And you know, as a kid, you're sort of seeing, oh, I wish I could be that successful. And but mm-hmm. the sad thing was, he, he actually took his life. And I was at that time just couldn't understand it. You know, I had no understanding of how could anyone want to take their life at such an early age. And mm. and particularly based on my perceptions that he was really successful. Like mm. why take your own life when you've got everything, you know? Like so, so from that moment, I realized mental health is really important. Uh, the, the, the way we think and how we think and mm-hmm. how we process our thoughts and what we do with our thoughts, the actions we take from our th- thoughts. And so that inspired me to then get deep into personal wow. development. Wow. And so I was reading all the self-help books mm-hmm. from 18 onwards and I'm still <laughs> reading them today. So <laughs> that's very much my journey. Not only are you still reading them today, you are sharing these same insights to your audience as well and to the, the audience, to the world at large, you know, um, it's a very important message, uh, Anthony. And of course, you know, it's something, it's one thing to be physically healthy and feel like, you know, like uh, we're at the peak of our health, but it's another thing to also be healthy internally to be healthy on the inside. And, and that involves a true holistic approach and this approach combines and particularly your approach it combines nutrition it combines lifestyle medicine and it combines mental health which i feel like is uh, a, a, an epidemic or we're, we're 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 entering an era of a mental health crisis and we need it more than ever today before we truly get into that, talk to us a little bit about these elements separately. You know, can you explain about how these work together and how they work separately as well? And how do they come together into a comprehensive wellness plan that you teach for, you know, for your audiences and for your clients as well? So certainly working in a particular area will bring you benefits. Uh, So no doubt, like if you're exercising, you'll feel better for exercising and you'll start noticing your overall energy, your Mm -hmm. overall alertness, clarity, focus, everything improve associated with you doing exercise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. However, as you know, it's the, you know, it's the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. So if we then incorporate good sleep practices, good sleep hygiene, Mm -hmm. and then we're starting to get really good sleep, we start mm-hmm. to recover from our exercise faster. We even start our energy then and our vitality goes to another level. Our yes. mental clarity yes. goes to another. Our emotional quotient or our emotional intelligence goes to another level. You know, we, we can better relate and better communicate and we've got more control over our emotions. And, mm-hmm. and so then, you know, you've got those two and then you start thinking, a oh, diet, I'm going to start improving my diet. And, You start to take out ultra processed foods, you start to clean it up, start to eat more whole foods. Mm -hmm. And so then, you know, then that that synergistic effect, you know, working with those three areas now results in a, just a, a, I guess, another level in terms of uh, benefits. Mm -hmm. And so, and then if we incorporate into mindfulness into this and and, yeah, and so, it's this really compounding effect that we notice. And that's certainly what I've noticed through my health journey is this compounding effect that you can achieve Mm -hmm. through doing little bits in all areas constantly is Mm -hmm. the key. And so it can start out with focusing on one area and now we're we're more likely to do something if we just hone in on one area and look Mm -hmm. for the incremental improvements in that area. Mm -hmm. But over time, we want to start incorporating other areas and then start focusing on incremental improvements in those areas. Mm -hmm. And then we start to get this synergistic effect from doing holism. So yes, you can get benefits working individually, Mm -hmm. but as I said at the start, the, the whole is so much greater than the sum of the parts. And Mm -hmm. 
I think that's where we want to take our health journey in time. And so anyone just starting out, absolutely focus on the one thing, focus on where you can get the quickest, fastest benefits. Like if you're thinking, I can have some quick wins in exercise, I like exercising, I'm going to focus on that. Absolutely focus on that. Mm -hmm. And then once you've got some good habits around your exercise, what's next? You know, exactly. what area are you going to, yeah, yeah. Exactly. And I love that because I'm a big proponent of physical exercise. I always encourage my friends. I always tell them like, look for, look for a workout, any activity that, you know, gets you, gets you, gets you pumping. And because I'm, I'm truly a big believer that it helps us mentally. It keeps us sharp. It keeps us, you know, it, it it's, it's a huge proponent to a holistic health, but it's not really a holistic way right because it's just one part like you said because it's one thing to be lifting ex uh, extremely like doing all these lifting and all that but you're not resting you're not getting the proper sleep that you need it's just, it's it doesn't translate into again this incremental kind of a uh, holistic approach that you that you talk about and i love that you talk about levels where you put these all together it takes you to another level in the same way with mental health it takes you to another level of of holistic approach as well when it comes to your health um but this isn't you know this isn't new so to speak it's just being preached before and we all know this before and it's been you know in all the magazines you've read before but why do you think we're not so open about it what are the challenges and some common you know like uh, persistence that you've seen that why do people continue with their bad habits when we already know that these are the things that we need to be practicing when it comes to our health how do you first of all why do we keep having these bad habits and how do you help people break these bad habits to achieve better health really great question and bad habits are subjective. So yeah. depending on who the person is, of course, uh, it, it's, it's whether they perceive that habit not serving them. So mm -hmm. it's really up to the person to decide and whether they want to consciously change that habit. And yes. the decision should be based on is that habit serving you and what what you're ultimately trying to achieve is it yes. helping you go in the direction that you want to go in mm -hmm. is it holding you back and mm -hmm. so if you come to that conscious awareness that yes this habit is somewhat hindering my ability to go forward like so if you're a business owner and you've got a habit around maybe it be alcohol for example mm -hmm. uh, and you you know drinking alcohol to calm down in the evenings or just mm -hmm. to unwind mm -hmm. but however that's having implication on your sleep when you're sleep deprived you don't have as good control over your emotions you don't have as much patience you're more irritable we also know th through studies that if we're sleep deprived we eat more foods that are not mm -hmm. so great for us that are highly mm -hmm. calorific and ultra processed mm -hmm. and so it has this compounding effect so the, the next day you're going to be tighter you won't be as performing as well in your business you won't have great communication or effective communication it'll be more emotive and mm -hmm. and so you you'll cause more damage control you'll have to repair you know <laughs> yes yeah, so so it has this ripple effect and so once you've come to that conscious awareness that i need to change mm -hmm. then you can actually do something about the change yes, and there you go. so it's really up to the individual to decide whether that habit's serving them or whether it's not, because I could perceive a habit that someone else is doing as bad based on my perceptions. However, from that person's perceptions, it could be a good habit based on what they know. And so we all have different levels of consciousness in terms of our conscious awareness. And we're always seeking, well, not, I mean, depending on who you are, some people are a bit stuck and so they might not be looking at that next level of consciousness. But mm -hmm. your listeners, your watchers of this podcast are certainly wanting to become more conscious <laughs> and they want to lift their, elevate their conscious awareness and they want to achieve excellence. In order to do that, we need to question everything we're doing around our habits mm -hmm. and start asking ourselves, is it serving me in terms of what I'm ultimately seeking. 
-hmm. and constantly ask yourself that and constantly reviewing your habits because the more we can finesse our habits to align with what we're seeking, yes. the more likely we're going to achieve the success that we're looking for. Yes, and that's quite the important uh, insight there because habits really is consistency, right? And we need to find what serves us. I love the, the insight where you said, what serving them might not be serving me or what's serving me might not be. It's the same way, right? Like we, it's, it's subjective, but these habits are what build us. It would build this kind of quality of life that we have. It dictates the kind of quality of life that we have. Can you help us get into a bit more about the science of habit or the behavior behind habits and why we choose to keep bad habits and uh, how is it crucial to our health and of course what are good habits to practice if there was one good habit that you could share to us today of course there are more um talk to us about that talk to us about what you could what we could practice more in our daily lives to ha achieve better health and well-being and overall well-being of course okay so let's start with what we can control to begin Please. with because you know at the end of the day there's no point on focusing on things that we can't control and so yes. what we can we have governance over is our perceptions mm -hmm. our decisions and our actions and obviously mm -hmm. our action component the motor response uh, the output will over time if we repetitively do that action that will result in a habit which is automated behavior it's, it's sort of behavior that we do that we might be unconscious of or have a subconscious sort of um, awareness of. So mm -hmm. they're habitually things that we do repetitiously mm -hmm. or repetitiously results in habitual behaviors. Okay, and, okay, okay. And, and, and what that, that happens subconsciously. Mm -hmm. And the reason why, and so our, our, our body or well, ultimately as an evolved species, we're constantly looking to go to that high level of consciousness. In order mm -hmm. to do that, we need to take the repetition away and put that in, into autopilot um, yes. so that we can increase our capacity to, I, I guess, absorb more, learn more and yes, yes. integrate that knowledge and go to the next level. Yes, and so, very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's, very much that process of, you know, perceptions, decisions, and actions. Mm -hmm. And so when we, our perceptions will, will be, you know, filtered in, in, in a sense, depending on who our mentors are, depending on who we looked up to, depending on who we take information in from. So people are learning from this podcast, right? So this is a source of information. There's a source of experts on this podcast. Some of your listeners will resonate with some of the experts and think, oh, wow, you know, he's making sense. I, I, I like his logic. I, you know, I'm going to start to implement something that I've learned on this podcast. Yes. And when they're making that decision, they're saying, well, there's more advantages of me doing this than disadvantages. So therefore, I'm going to take action, right? So then the person yeah, yeah. takes action. But what happens is as we consciously evolve and go to the next level, we might realize that that action that we used to do mm. might not be giving us the optimized advantage or the, the ultimate advantage that we're looking yeah. for in order to go, or our objectives change. So also mm. our goalposts may move yeah. and some of those old habits that were once we had more benefits than disadvantages that we're doing that have now become automated right. we then start to question them are they really serving me in terms of where the goalposts have moved to and is it going to give me the the quickest path to success yes. ultimately you know yes. we, we we all are looking for i guess that you know we're, we're wide in that sense to take the path of least resistance of to conserve energy, right? Yeah, <laughs> conserve energy. Exactly, exactly. So, yeah, so, so we're, go ahead. Yeah, so we're always looking for the habits that drive that efficiency. Yes. And, okay. Yeah. Very important. I love that perspective with the, the habits that drive the efficiency so we can take in more, so we can do more, so we can learn more, so we can take in more information, have that room. Because if your mind is not clear, 
there's no room to grow. If you do not have that clarity in you, there's no room to grow. And this is why I feel like I'm a big proponent when it comes to physical exercise. I feel like it really clears your mind a lot. It gives you, it gets you pump your blood going, it pumps you up. But more than that, it actually, it, it's a great way. It's probably, is it not our major primary way of detoxification of putting getting all that uh toxics out of our system and allows us to you know live kind of like again much healthier you know you, the blood the, the muscles that they want they want to be pumped you know they want blood flowing into them especially our brain precisely our brains precisely what i need so we need that constant kind of clearing and but not just physically like you mentioned but also being able to take in that perspective that environment what environment are you in right like like what are you consuming every day so this brings us back full circle to that holistic approach and like who are the people you are surrounding yourself with what are the influences you are surrounding yourself with and it it it's, it, it needs to be healthy and i kind of like a, that to me gives me the thought of like it, it what are you consuming it brings in social media right it brings in doom scrolling so to speak how uh, we are all addicted to doom scrolling dr and uh, anthony i mean it's it's quite it's quite the bane for a lot of us right to again it's it's a habit it's a bad habit and not so good habit it might serve other people could you give to us a specific bad habit that everyone should get rid of one and one good specific habit that I feel like we are in full control of that we should be doing, what would those two be? It's a really good question. And I, I, without knowing every individual listener on yeah, this podcast, yes, of course, of it, course. It, in a general it, it, sense, it, how about in a general sense, like uh, in most of the people, individuals that you've encountered, these two would be a common denominator. Would there be, uh, what would it be? Yeah. So it's, yeah, it, it's, it's really interesting because depending on the goal of the, like, so we're all completely unique and special, yes, right? We, course. yes. And we, we, we all have a unique special mission on planet earth. Mm -hmm. And I, I have no idea what people are striving for on this podcast. I have no idea what your ultimate objective is. And so I, I, you know, for me, I'd just be having a stab in the dark and right. like, so like, so just let's, let's get back to exercise. So yes, exercise serves us well. It mm -hmm. helps with lymphatic drainage, which helps yes. with detoxification mm -hmm. and that helps with us managing inflammation and, and, and you know, not allowing excessive toxic toxins to build up in our system. So we can think clearer, mm -hmm. we have more clarity, uh, we've got more energy and all that sort of thing. So yes, we need to move our body, but mm -hmm. there's a point at which we move our body that then becomes we're actually increasing the toxic load, right? Because Ooh. what what inflammation what what exercise does is it does invoke some inflammation, right? Mm -hmm. And and so depending on the individual, some some people have more tolerance to exercise and will have a greater threshold and can do more exercise. Mm -hmm. But I I, like so someone just starting out with exercise has a much lower tolerance around, around their threshold and, and how much they could actually do and, and what's actually good for them so i cannot even prescribe exercise on this podcast for someone mm -hmm. with okay. without me knowing them and, yeah, and so of course so yeah so certainly people can overdo exercise to the point that it's mm -hmm. causing them the, the reverse of what they're ultimately trying to achieve. So it, I once had the belief, the more exercise I did, the healthier I'd be. But now I've realized through my conscious awareness and through my studies, that's not the case. And so the, the, there's a tipping point. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's so, quite the interesting perspective. Of course, like it's a different goals for every person, unique uh, physiologies and, you know, um, not everyone can exercise. And uh, even if I would love to say like, I, you exercise, you think clearer and whatnot. Um, when it comes to mental health, I think this is a part that I think we, we've touched up a lot, but you also mentioned how you say wokeism, 
you mentioned that wokeism is fueling society's addiction. Um, can you elaborate? Because to me, wokeism is it deals with mental health more than all the other health uh, approaches that we have and what we've discussed, I feel. Can you elaborate on this idea and why wokeism has impacted people's pursuit of happiness and harmony and how have, how much of how much of a detriment it has been to our mental health? It's a really good question, and I think I need to finish answering your previous question. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. You know, so, so that, but in order to answer this one, right? Please, so, please, please. And, and, that, and that takes me back to what I mentioned about the three things we have control over, our mm -hmm. perceptions, decisions, and actions. And so mm -hmm. one of the things that can really help the listeners here, that doesn't matter who you are, what goal you're, you're seeking, right, mm -hmm. is around the way we perceive things. And mm -hmm. so whenever we perceive something and we invoke an emotional response, so we feel like we read an article and we, we start to feel sad or angry about it, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. what what is happening is we've, we're having a, a, you know, a subjective experience. So we're, mm -hmm. and we've gone into judgment. So what we're doing is judging what's happened based on our, upbringing and all our filters right yes, um yes, our yes. filtering process uh mm -hmm. and, and our beliefs and mm -hmm. you know and, and and our values and everything like that and uh ethics mm -hmm. and morals and things like that so mm -hmm. uh, but that's that's clouding the reality or the actuality uh, around yes. what's happened uh yes. because when they'll put a filter over what's happened and that filter has split our consciousness. So we're in the moment of feeling sad, we're conscious, more conscious of more downsides, right? So so we've got yes. stacking up all the, the negatives about yes. what we're just perceived. Mm. And we're unconscious, so we've got split consciousness, unconscious of the positives, right? But the actuality is that it has both. Everything has both. Of course. But we're choosing through our filter. Well, that's how we're seeing the world, through our filter. Everyone has this subjective filter based on their upbringing and their, their religious values and beliefs and everything like that. All their teachers, preachers, and all the podcasts they listen to. And, and so what we can do is ask ourselves the better question. Once we feel the emotion and we've got this imbalanced view of things because it's invoked an emotion so an emotion is there to drive us away from something or towards something right yes, so yes, yes. that and, and it's a survival mechanism based on judgment it's i've judged this situation as evil i've judged this situation as bad because i see um, i'm conscious yes. of i'm conscious of the negatives yes, but yes. i have really an unconscious awareness of the positives about this and hence i've got this invoked response within me which is negative built up emotions. I'm angry, frustrated. So I'm either going to run away, like turn off the news, or I'm going to go out there and I'm going to rally and I'm going to rally with anger and, and, and fight for this cause, you know, because it's injustice. And mm -hmm. again, that injustice is subjective because yes. if you look at all the wars and, you know, the wars that are going on in the world, they're seeing it from their own lens, okay? Of course, of course, of course. <laughs> Everyone's a good person. Everyone's a good guy from where they're seeing correct, it, right? And correct, if correct. you try to take always these sides, then you're always, when you take these sides, very extreme sides, you're always seeing the negative. And that does something to you internally, right? It gives you, it gives you, it, it has some effect, of course, because you're always constantly like trying to fight some sort of injustice that may not actually be an injustice at all, but you are doing a disservice to yourself by trying to fight, you know, uh, uh, of course it's a noble, it's, it's, it feels noble, of course, right? I mean, wanting to care about others and having concern for society at large is a noble cause. But if you cannot fight your own battles, if you cannot fight these things internally, I mean, I think it's important to start within first, right? Like it often we are projecting this consciousness. We're projecting like wanting to fix things around us when we are unable to fix things for ourselves. And I feel like that is where we should start today and where we should start 
in 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 in, in any endeavor really um anthony i i love really your perspective and what you've uh, how you're approaching health and i love this i feel like it's a fresh perspective but at the same time you know you 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 are again talking about it in such a simplified manner or like in a in a deeper meaningful way uh when it comes to your approach in health um what is it now that you see yourself when it comes to uh, me and my, uh, of course, you have your own podcast as well, and me and my health up. Um, and you, of course, are started me and my wellness. Um, how do you see yourself in the future? How do you see your company? Uh, and how do you see what you do with your clients and the individuals? How do you see yourself collaborating continuously to health awareness and, um, you know, what are your future aspirations, basically? How do you see yourself contributing to uh, health in general, to all the world and to all the individuals out there? Yeah, so mine is through empowerment. So as that sick child, I felt very disempowered. I felt that I had no control, but that, again, was a perception of mine. I mean, I was a very young kid, but the reason why I sought education was to become empowered in health. And so my mission now is to empower others in health so that they have the ability to make a choice. They feel like they have the freedom to choose. They're not dictated to this is the only way you can solve this health problem. What I want to give them is different perspectives and different avenues that align to who they are mm -hmm. and what goals they're pursuing. So I'm helping coaching that individual in ultimately aligning what they're doing to take them towards their goal. Mm -hmm. And so I, I do that in a holistic way. And wow. I think what I really want to get back to just because I, I left, I guess the listeners in a bit of a conundrum around what I was sharing around that negative emotion mm -hmm. and that Oh, please, split, please. Of, split of consciousness. I, I just want to give them something to walk away with because that's empowering them mm -hmm. is whenever they feel this invoked emotion within and it's that emotion of sadness or, you know, these extreme polarized emotions, mm -hmm. which either make us angry, invoke anger, you know, so that we want to fight something or we want to run away from something. Mm -hmm. What we want to ask ourselves is how is it serving me? Like, so what, cause that what, what, when we ask ourselves that question, we're bringing the positives of what we're perceived mm -hmm. to our conscious awareness. And we're starting to equilibrate what we initially, where we initially split our consciousness yes, into yes. just negative and positive. Mm -hmm. Now we're starting to bring the negative and positives together. And, and when we bring them together, we, we, we knew, we, we actually neutralize and, and then we actually see the wow. order in what we initially perceived was disordered, chaotic and unfair. What we start to see is the hidden order. We, we start to see the meaning and all humans are meaning and purpose driven. Every, everyone's asking themselves, why me? Why is this happening to me? Because they want to find the meaning. So, and this is our evolved consciousness. We're, we're, we're in the search for meaning and the search for understanding, and we want to lift our conscious awareness and go to the next level of consciousness. If we take the negatives of what we're experiencing and match them with the positives, what we do is equilibrate the mind. Right. We go into our higher level of consciousness wow. and we, we, we actually see the hidden order and we actually go to the next level of consciousness. So, wow. and we're constantly growing by by stepping out of judgment. And so whenever we notice ourselves judging, mm -hmm. we will notice it because we feel the emotions. Right. When you feel the emotions, you want to ask yourself, what am I judging here? And then ask yourself, if it's negative emotions, how is it benefiting me? Or how is it benefiting the people wow. that you're perceiving that it's unfair to? How is it benefiting them? How is it serving them? And what you'll start to find the answers when you ask these better questions. And so that's what I want to leave the listeners with. And it's the same with extreme euphoria and extreme positive where you're just yeah. seeing the positives and you're not seeing the, 
the, the negatives, right? What you want to do is, how is this not serving me? How And so then you equilibrate the mind and then you see the balance and then you actually make better decisions. Because if we just see positives and no negatives, what happens is we go forward and take action, but over time we start to see the negatives. And this happens in relationships, right? So initially we're blinded to the negatives. We just see the upside of the person we're, we're super infatuated with that upside of the person. Yes. We just want that person. We want, just want them all the time. We can't stop talking about them. We can't stop thinking about them. Mm-hmm. We get to know them more and we start to see the other side and we're thinking, oh, I don't quite like this other side. But it was always there. It was just oh, that you were blinded. Precisely. Blinded. Precisely. Yeah. Because we yeah. choose what we want to see. Um, uh, Correct. Anthony, I love, thank you for circling back around and completing that. I mean, I love that you shared that with us right now. I think it's important. It's very, very crucial. You know, it, it kind of brings us back around to like, 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 some of the parts, right? We're more than the sum of the parts. We just nutrition, lifestyle, and but this one is more deeper in the sense that what are we, what are we looking at? What are we judging? How are we perceiving things? And how much are we welcoming everything? Because, you know, like again, it's, I think it's very important relationships, like you said, because the things that we love about the person, about the individual, about the, it's we could never appreciate that. We can't appreciate the opposite. We could never see that side if we can't appreciate this side as well. And it goes the same for relationship. It goes the same for the endeavors that we are taking in and the things that we are judging, so to speak. If you're judging something, yeah, like of course you're seeing this because maybe you want to see this side as well. And I think I, I love that you incorporate that into a holistic health approach because mentally it's important to have open perspectives and these perspectives i believe give us um seeing the negative side seems what he called this counterintuitive right but i think practicing giving having that practice of seeing both sides actually gives us a sense of resilience it gives us a sense of strength that okay i can deal with any situation i can approach it with a fresh perspective And I can learn how to deal with whatever negative emotions that might come. And I'll be able to handle that, you know, very well. I I love that perspective. Thank you, Anthony, for sharing that. So I think think, think it's quite an insight that our audience can definitely, definitely take home. Um, I'd love to give you this opportunity. Where can we learn more about Anthony Harcher? Where can we learn about me and my wellness and of course you have your own podcast where are you most active in are you on instagram are you on linkedin let us know so i'm actually across all the social platforms so connect it's whatever i guess your listeners are most on and want to Mm -hmm. connect with me on Mm -hmm. so i'm mainly around my business name which is me and my wellness in terms of tags uh you'll Mm -hmm. find me on linkedin by my name anthony harcher healthy man yeah the healthy man that's right um, and my podcast is me and my health up so mm-hmm. i'm wanting to health you up I'll take you to the next oh, level of your oh, conscious okay. awareness I, I didn't catch that <laughs> earlier well wow, that's really cool okay well well anthony um to all our audience listeners out there i would love i invite you all of course if you enjoyed the perspective that we had today the perspective that anthony shared with us today please uh uh, drop him a connect, uh, go go to his website, go to his uh, podcast, learn more about him. And of course, you know, uh, Anthony, is there anything else that you would like to leave the audience one last time and to take us home and take with us home today? What would it be? I just want to close out one of the previous questions. And, and that was around, you mentioned, you know, the bad habit and I sort of diverted and went away from answering that but oh, please, please, what, please. What, what, what i want to touch on there is it's the comparison to others and this is what i don't want you to do because when you compare yourself to others you start questioning you and you start losing and it clouds the vision of who you are by comparing yourself yes. to others so you will perceive that you're doing things wrong or that you're not doing things right because of the comparison to others just remember that they're a complete unique entity and special and they have their superpowers but you too also have your unique special superpowers so i want you to focus on you focus on you and being the best version of you 
don't compare yourself to others because that's when you're going to feel less of or you might see yourself as better than someone and, yes. and again that's putting yourself on a pedestal or you're putting yourself in a pit and i don't want you to do either i just want you to be the best version of you mm -hmm. so don't compare yourself to others and don't allow the distractions because you touched on social media before don't allow the distractions because the, the distractions through social media will be all based on comparisons you'll be comparing yourself to others and and, and this will make you feel less of or you might you'll feel better and again you are authentically you and there's no one else on this earth that's like you so don't try to copy and try to be someone else just go about being the best version of you and you will thrive wow what a way what 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 an insight and wisdom that you have just shared to us that and thank you for again for circling back i apologize you know like I, I i i am you know if i could ha if we had more time i would love to dig you more into that but I, perhaps we could have you on another time as well now uh, uh anthony um I, I am pretty sure there are a lot of our audience and listeners here that have resonated with us today with all of your messages today um Thank you for being on the show. We'd love to have you on again. Thank you so much, Joshua. And thank you, listeners, for tuning in uh, to this insightful episode with Joshua. Thank you. All right. Fantastic. And to all our audience and listeners out there, I hope you enjoyed this one. See you on the next one. All right. So here's the thing. We try to get a little bit better every day, but we can't do it without you. So if you like the video, make sure to like and subscribe below. And if you have any comments, just leave them in the space under.